So in this video, we're going to learn as much about Docker and containers as we can in five minutes. So what is a container? A container is a really lightweight way of packaging software with all of its dependencies, which means you can run your software anywhere. So to get started, we're going to need to download some software called Docker. So you can get that here. So just download the version of Docker desktop for your computer. And once you've got that, you can run the Docker command. So the Docker command is how we create images and start containers and things like that. So to create a container, we first need to create an image. A Docker image is a file which actually stores our program and all of its dependencies. When we want to run our program, we run the image and it creates a container for us. So if we look in this folder, we can see there is a file called main.go. So that's just a simple Go program uh, and it's just a simple HTTP server. We can also see a file called Docker file. So if I go inside the Docker file, this is a special file that Docker looks for that we build to create an image. So it's kind of like a piece of source code, which we compile into a binary. And then when we want to run the binary, we start a new process. With containers, we start with a Docker file, which is like our source code. We compile that into a Docker image. And then when we want to run our program, we create a container. So Docker images are made up of lots of reusable layers. Each one of these lines will become a layer in the image. And the first line of your Docker file always specifies the base Docker image. Every Docker image is based on an earlier image. So in this case, we're saying our Docker image will be based on the Golang image. So that's an image that has all of the dependencies that we need to build Go programs. We set the working directory to this slash home folder. That's the same as saying CD slash home on our command line. But this means when we launch our container, the container will begin from the slash home directory. Then we copy some files from our local machine into our image. So we're copying main.go into the slash home folder and we're copying go.mod into the same slash home folder. And then we can run arbitrary commands. So on this next layer, we're running the go build command, which will produce a binary for us. And then finally, we specify the entry point. And then when we launch our container, it's going to run the binary that was created when we built the image. So let's actually see what that looks like. So if I do docker build and then I tell it to look in the current folder for the docker file and I hit enter, you can see all of the different layers executing as we build the image. So down here at the bottom is our images ID. But if we go up a layer, we can see that when it executed this layer, we can see the layer before that and the layer before that. We can see this layer was actually cached and we can see that the very first layer began by basing our image off of the Golang image. So if I said docker run and then I paste in the image ID, we can run the image. So you can see here the server is listening. And if I type in localhost 8080, nothing actually happens. And it's because we didn't expose the port. Docker containers aren't actually virtual machines. There's no actual virtualization happening when you run a Docker container. You're just running the process with limited permissions. It can only see a very limited view of the file system. Its permissions on the file system are also very limited and you can restrict its networking capabilities. And that's pretty much what a container is. So we're gonna run that container again, but we're gonna map port 8080 on my host computer to port 8080 on the container and that will let us connect to it. So if we refresh, we can see the words hello world. So one thing to notice here is the image we just created and you can see it's actually 970 megabytes but all it's doing is it's running a really simple HTTP server. So the reason for that is because containers contain all of the dependencies a piece of software requires to run. And in this case, when we built our image, we included everything from this Docker image here, which includes everything that you need to actually build Go programs. But we don't need to include all that stuff in our container. We only need to be able to run a Go program. So Docker actually has a solution for this and it's called multi-stage builds. So if we look at this folder again, it looks the same as before. Before. But if we go into our Docker file now, we can see it's slightly different. And just like before, we are starting off at the Golang image. But what we've done here is we've said as stage one. So we've labeled this first part of the image as stage one. But apart from that, it's basically the same as the last image. But then we get down to here and we can see the word from again. So normally the from command is at the very top of your Docker file and it only appears once in the image. But in a multi-stage build, we can actually have multiple from stages. And each from stage represents an intermediate Docker image and the resulting image is actually the last one down here. So we're gonna create this Docker image first, then we're gonna create this Docker image. And you can see here, 
that we're copying from the first stage, this file here, slash home slash my app, and we're copying that into slash home in the second Docker image. So if we do that again, we do Docker build, we can see our new image. We can see this image is only 108 megabytes and it's not 970. So these image names are quite hard to remember. So it'd be nice to have shorter names and Docker lets us do that by adding tags to our images. So if I said Docker tag and I take this image and I say I want to tag it with the name go small, that's it tagged. So now if I type in Docker run go small, it works exactly the same as if I had have typed in Docker run and then pasted in this ID. What we can also do is push our Docker images up to public registries. These are public places just like public Git repositories where people can download our images and start containers with our software. So if I was to run this, it would push the image up to a public Docker registry. We can also pull images. So let's try and pull the Ruby image. And you can see here now it's downloading the image and you can see it's downloading all of the different layers. And once this finishes, we'll be able to run Ruby programs. So that's been a really quick look at Docker containers. If you want to find other containers, you can go to the Docker hub and you can find lots of pre-created containers for you to use. So containers just make running software so much easier. Running software in a container just works. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe and I'll see you next time.